Myanmar may have used disproportionate force against Rohingya Muslims, but there is no proof of genocidal intent. That is the defense of the country's de facto leader, the Nobel Peace Prize laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, addressing the International Court of Justice, where her country stands accused of genocide. She blamed the violence that forced hundreds of thousands to flee Rakhine State on an internal armed conflict. She made no reference to graphic accounts heard by the court of mass killings, gang rapes and babies thrown into burning buildings. Well, let's get over to The Hague live in the Netherlands. Anna Holligan is at the court following what has been a remarkable uh, hour or, or two of testimony. And a robust defence from Aung San Suu Kyi, who began by explaining she understood the definition of genocide, but she said the situation in Myanmar was something else. It was an internal armed conflict. And she said this started with a history lesson in 2016 when Rohingya militants had attacked an army post and nine police officers were killed. She said the army then responded with clearance operations, which she said were legitimate to clear the area of terrorists or insurgents. But she did concede that mistakes may have been made. Mr. President, it cannot be ruled out that disproportionate force was used by members of the defense services, in some cases, in disregard of international humanitarian law, or that they did not distinguish clearly enough between ARSA fighters and civilians. There may also have been failures to prevent civilians from looting or destroying property after fighting or in abandoned villages. But these are determinations to be made in the due course of the criminal justice process, not by any individual in the Myanmar government. Please bear in mind this complex situation and the challenge to sovereignty and security in our country when you are assessing the intent of those who attempted to deal with the rebellion. Surely, under the circumstances, genocidal intent cannot be the only hypothesis. So, Anna, she's made her position very clear indeed there. Where does that take us in terms of this, this whole hearing? Well, what she said there was really critical because she's attributing any action that violated international law to individual soldiers rather than any genocidal intent which could be attributed to the state and that's because the Gambia brought this case to the International Court of Justice, the World Court, because it accused Myanmar of violating the Genocide Convention. Any one of the 149 members of that convention could have taken this action. In terms of where it leaves us now, the Gambia yesterday brought this extreme evidence of babies thrown into burning buildings pregnant women raped by eight men, firing squads, and they use this to try to compel the judges here to issue these emergency measures to try to protect the 600,000 or so Rohingyas who remain in Rakhine State. And what was really interesting there about Aung San Suu Kyi's defence is that she ended it by saying that the World Court should not take any action to intervene that could risk aggravating the complex conflict in Rakhine State. Right, and what is the reality of what the court can and can't do at this stage? I mean, the, the idea that from this we reach a, a view that it is or isn't genocide seems quite a long stretch. Well, these three days of hearings aren't about guilt or innocence, whether there, there was or wasn't a genocide. These hearings are purely about whether there is enough evidence for the judges to think these interventions are necessary to protect the Rohingya who are still there. And that's why they're being so specific about what's needed. And David, there is actually a precedent here. Um, a, a, a few years ago, uh, Bosnia brought Serbia here to the International Court of Justice asked for the same intervention, emergency measures, and they were issued within 19 days. But then two years later, the slaughter happened at Srebrenica. 8,000 Muslim men and boys were killed. And so they are determined to prevent another genocide with this action. And that's why the Gambia said these measures are urgently needed. OK, Anna, thank you very much indeed. The latest there from uh, Anna live at The Hague.